Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting lesson. In this video, we will be going over the dollar value LIFO method to value our inventory. Keep in mind with this video, as with all of our other videos, a spreadsheet for this problem is available on our website. So I have linked to that website for the spreadsheet in the description below. So when we're doing the dollar value LIFO method, we are essentially creating inventory layers for each year, which is going to uh, basically adjust what we have in our inventory layer back to base year prices. In this case, our base year is going to be 20x1. That's where the price index is 100. Now, when you're taking a look at these, uh, like each individual price index here, what you're essentially doing is you are going to be uh, treating the price index as a percentage. That's usually one of the most important notes that I see when we're first getting started with this. So for each of these, I'm actually going to be adjusting this, uh, pretending it says 100%, and I'm going to put them in as a decimal just so that it's easier for us later on when we start doing some math. 1.12, 1.15. Keep in mind, if it's 115%, move your decimal two places to the left to put it in decimal form. So for each one, we are going to use that consideration. Right? Now, I also recommend, before you jump right into the problem, uh, create two additional columns for yourself. Uh, you're going to have a column that is going to adjust each of these current year dollars into base year dollars. And then also one that is going to show the change from the prior year. So let's get started on this first column here, base year dollars. For every single one, when we are figuring out the base year dollars, we are essentially taking our current year dollars and dividing it by the price index. Now, obviously for the base year, our uh, current year dollars are going to equal our base year dollars because this is the year that we are basing all of our future layers off of, right? So if we pull this down though, we'll notice that for 20X2, if we adjust it by that price index of 1.05, that brings it down to 130, so on and so forth. So simply take your current year dollars, divide it by your price index, and that will give you your base year. Same thing for your change from prior year. Um, the only difference here is keep in mind uh, 20x1. We're not seeing a prior year, so we're going to start off there with that being null. But for the new years, we are going to be comparing our base year changes. So keep in mind when we say change from prior year, our focus is on the base year. So for every single one, we are going to take the current year we are analyzing for the base year and minus it out by the prior base year dollar adjustment. So as we can see here, we have an increase of 10,000. Uh, when we go from 20x2 to 20x3, we'll see that there's going to be a decrease of 2,500. So that's important that you do designate whether it's an increase or decrease because that will change how we affect our layers and so on and so forth. Increase of 12,500, increase of 5,000, decrease of 1,000. Now that we have all these little pieces of information, we're going to move on to actually calculating our ending inventory cost for every single year. So let's start it off with 20x1. For each of these, as you are calculating your inventory layers, um, you are going to have a separate area for each one. So for example, for our first one, I am going to start by grabbing our base year, 120,000. And I will multiply that by our price index. In this case, for this year, it was 1.00 or 100. And then let's go ahead and multiply those together. Let me fix that real quick. Multiply these together to find out what the total cost of this layer is. So 120,000 times our price index of 1 should give us 120,000. That base here is always going to be your easy one because you're simply taking that layer times your price index for your base year of one, which keep in mind that base here should always have a price index of 1.00 or 100, of course. Uh, let's take a look at 20x2. In this case, we see that it has gone up from the prior year. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to pull this 
because this is going to be used as our starting point. And then from this point forward, it's actually going to be pretty similar. We're just going to be adjusting the information that's provided on here. So whenever there is an increase in that base year dollar, you're simply going to add another layer equal to the change from the prior year and then multiplied by that year's price index. So simply 10,000 times 1.05 and now we have that 10,500 for that layer. So a few things that I think you should do after each year. Take a look at what you ha are multiplying over here on your left hand side. The sum of that, so in this case, 130,000 should be equal to the amount of your base year dollars for that year. And then your final step is simply going to be to sum up the 120,000, 10,500, and then you have your amount that should be reported on the balance sheet for that particular year for this company. So, so far we see that at the end of 20X1, the company should re be reporting an inventory of 120,000. For 20X2, the company should be reporting an inventory of 130,500, so on and so forth. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our next year because we have something interesting happening in 20X3. And just like before, I'm going to start with my layers from the prior year, but I will adjust these as needed. Right? So in 20X3, we have something interesting happening here. We had a decline, right? Now keep in mind, I said before in the prior year, when we had an add, we are going to add an additional layer. Now, if we have a decline though, some kind of decrease, we are not going to add an additional layer. Instead, we are going to eat up the most recent layer. Remember, this is LIFO, last one in, first one out. We're gonna eat up the most recent layer by the amount of the decrease, right? So we're gonna take 2,500 away from that last layer. Right? Now keep in mind if we add those two up, it still follows that rule that I said before, 127,500, base year of 127,500. Now also notice we're going to keep the old index because that index is tied to that layer. So when we redo our math here, we will see a little bit of a decrease in that layer because we lost some of those base year dollars. And then we're simply going to add those up and that gives us 127,875. Right. So in a year of an increase, you can expect to get another layer. In the year of a decrease, you're going to eat into the most recent layer. Right. Uh, let's keep going. Let's try 20x4. Right, so our fourth year here. And again, just like always, I'm going to grab those prior years, just because I know that's going to be my starting point. And I see in 20X4 that we had an increase during the year. So I know that I'm going to be adding another layer. Let me just delete those. All right. So I'm going to add another layer, which is equal to that change. And I'm going to use that layer's price index to multiply. Perfect, and now if I go ahead and I take my 12,500 and I multiply it by my 1.1, that 110 base price index. Oh, sorry, I got a cool, okay, I know, I know, I know. Gotta click it, okay, <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm seeing the new amount adjusted for that price index and simply add them up. And we have our inventory balance for the end of 20X4. Right. So here we see we have three layers. We can look at 20x5, see that it's an increase, and we know in 20x5 we will have four layers now because we're going to be adding on to the layers that were already there. So let's do 20x5. Again, like always, I'm going to start by taking my existing layers, and then I know it's an increase during this year. There's that 5,000. So I'm going to add an extra one because I know I'm going to need it. All right. So again, we have an increase. So I'm going to create a new layer that's equal to that increase. I'm going to multiply it by that year's price index, 1.12. 
and let's do our math, 5,000 times 1.12, beautiful, and then simply sum them up. Good. Now keep in mind one thing that I, one question that I usually get, notice back here in 20x3, when we went from 10,000 for that layer to 7,500, notice that we never make up that missing 2,500 right when we went on to the next layer in 20x4 we simply added on that change so once we eat up into a layer we're never going to add back to that layer it's gone it's just it's it's history at that point right so that 7500 will sit as 7500 until there is a day if there is ever a day that eats up far enough to the, to the point where it's going to eat up part of that 7500 but at that point that 2500 that we lost that's gone finito. All right, let's go to 20x2. Uh, here we see a decrease. So we know that we are going to be using four layers, right? However, this is no longer going to be 5,000 for this most recent layer. We are going to eat up 1,000 of that for that decrease. So 5,000, which it originally had been, minus the 1,000, for the decrease from the prior year. And then 4,000 times 1.12, that's going to give us 4,480. And then we simply sum to find our ending inventory balance. Okay, so that's really it for dollar value LIFO. It can be very confusing at first, but one thing it, I, I always kind of encourage you, if you remember to turn this into a percentage, also a decimal, if you make this base year dollars column, this change from prior year, and you remember your rules for whenever there's an increase or decrease, if there's an increase, you're adding a layer, if there's a decrease, you're eating up into the prior layer, it really isn't that difficult to run through it, right? So take some time to take a look at this video. Please make sure that you open up the spreadsheet and you work through it, make sure you understand it. And keep in mind, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And until next time, Happy studying. Thank you so much.